Hello and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Deb Gillard, your host of the program, and today is Monday, June 4th. Welcome to June, and hope you had a lovely weekend. I know there were definitely uh, graduation ceremonies here in Owatonna and graduation parties throughout the area, and it was, uh, for the most part, I think a very nice weekend for all of those things to be going on. We hope you are uh, having a, a, a great beginning of the summer. And do remember, though, now, as we hit these graduations and kids are getting out of school, now comes the time they don't pay attention and we need to. So they'll be out a little more in force as we get, especially toward the end of this week, on bikes, on rollerblades, on skateboards, and walking, and, and not necessarily necessarily paying as much attention as we would like them to so please be safe it is that transitional time of the year and we always need to take a little extra caution thanks for joining us on charter channel 8 cable tv in the owatonna area or out on the internet where you can find us we've got a facebook page hit the old like thumbs up and you'll have notifications when we have new programs there you can find us also if you just do owatonna today show google youtube um, you will get us in any of those ways as well. And of course, if you have things that you would like to get to us, information about events coming up in the area, or information about something you would like to see us uh, consider for a guest or a show topic, please take note of our cell phone numbers and our email address on the screen throughout the course of the program, and we're always happy to hear from you. Today, a couple of on-location segments. First of all, Leanne is going to take us out and about. She was part of the Steele County Big Day Bird Count. Uh, in Satur on Saturday, May 19th, so it was a little bit ago, but not too long, and uh, she's going to let us know what that was all about and what happens when that big day bird count happens. After that, to the Steele County History Center and a little bit more of the grand opening. Uh, it's such a beautiful new facility. We're going to uh, let you hear a little bit more of what happened on grand opening day. So we're taking our first break and heading out for a while. We'll see you at the end of the program. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty with the Sterling House Assisted Living, a part of Brookdale Senior Living. Our mission is to enrich the lives of those we serve with compassion, respect, excellence, and integrity. We are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet of Horizon Eye Care Professionals. Eye care you can trust. We're proud supporters of Owatonna Today. Hi, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Tim Thomas of the Brick Mager Funeral Home. And we're proud to serve the Medford and Owatonna areas with cremation and traditional funeral services. And we're proud to be a part of the Owatonna Today Show. It's Leanne on the go for the Owatonna Today Show. And today is Saturday, May 19th. It's 5 a.m. in the morning. And I bet you're wondering what I'm doing up at 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm actually out here at Rice Lake State Park. And I'm going to take you on a big day bird count. Now last year there was the movie The Big Year, for those of you who saw it. And um, we've been doing, a group of friends and myself, for the past 30 years on the third weekend in May, a big day bird count in Steele County. What is a big day bird count, you might ask? It's where we drive around Steele County and we count as many birds as we can find in one day. So we'll actually be birding from 5 a.m. this morning until probably 8.30, close to 9 o'clock tonight. And we'll see what numbers we can come up with. Well, it's 5.30 and it's finally light out. We've probably gotten about 15 species so far. The thing is, on the big day bird count, what you're able to do is you're able to not only use sight sightings, when you actually see the bird, but you can identify the bird by their song. And given how far out the leaves are this year because of our very early spring, we're going to have to heavily rely on what we hear. There's part of the group there and we do have a guest birder with us all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. He used to bird with us a number of years ago when he lived closer uh, in uh, Illinois and St. Louis. You're listening to a house wren call is very distinctive. This is 
one of the ways that we'll be able to identify birds is by their song. As you can see, the underbrush here is pretty thick, so it's going to be really difficult to really see any birds that are buried deep in, in those bushes. We always start our big day out here at Rice Lake State Park, and that's partly because the park gives us several different types of habitats where we'll find different types of birds. There's the lake, and of course we'll find the water birds there. Gulls, terns, geese, ducks. Although because of the early spring, most of the ducks migrated through very, very early. So basically what we have left for ducks here are the resident ones. The mallards, the blue winged teals, that type of thing. And then we have the woods. And here we'll get a lot of our woodland birds. We'll get our woodland warblers that are migrating on through. Some of the warblers do nest here for the summer months. And then later on, Rice Lake State Park has a couple patches of really great prairie. And there we get a lot of the prairie style birds. A lot of different types of sparrows, bobolinks, those types of birds. And then, when we're done birding here at Rice Lake State Park, we uh, travel by car and we travel around the rest of the county. We'll get to that later. We're looking at a goldfinch here. We're in the prairie part of the park. It's just walk and stop, listen, look. Walk, stop, listen, look. Guys up here are after some type of a flycatcher, maybe a willow flycatcher. We're probably at about quarter to seven in the morning now. Well, it's a little after 8 o'clock in the morning. We've left the boat launch area of the park um, area and now we are headed to the wilderness camp. And there's a lot of meadowland in here so we should pick up some uh, different types of sparrows, bobolinks, that kind of thing. And uh, we're up to 50, 50 birds which isn't too bad considering the kind of this day. This is a real treat. You're looking here at a sedgerin. And he's very similar to our house wren. A little bit bigger, longer tail, a little more markings on him, but listen to him sing. They're doing a prairie restoration out here at Rice Lake State Park. What they did is they chisel plowed in the fall and then they just finished planting and this should be all native grass and wildflower planting. So it'll be interesting to see towards the end of the summer what actually is coming up. But evidently they were developing too many invasive species in this area. So now all we need is rain to activate those seeds. It's pretty windy out here. I wanted to show you this great bird here. This is called a bobolink. And they actually migrate all the way from South America. Down in the Pampas grass area, Argentina. They are really cool. Whoa, he's bobbing in the wind there. There you go, that's your bobolink. Well, it's lunchtime. And we're up to 75 birds. Now we'll leave the park and we'll start driving around Steele County. We're on the road now. We'll be driving to different spots throughout Steele County looking for different types of birds. We need a lot of swallows. Uh, we'll look for open field sparrows and shorebirds among others. So here we go. Out on our road trip through Steele County some of the places we look for are wetlands such as this. 
And out of here, it doesn't look like there's much, but there's mallard, there's blue winged teal, there's a gadwall duck, and they're discussing something else, perhaps a redneck grebe. So we stop here and we check these places out pretty thoroughly. Well, it's now a little after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We've been birding for 12 hours straight. We're out here at Oakland Lake. There's not a whole lot out on the lake, but we did come up with some female hooded mergansers, some ruddy ducks, and an eared grebe, which is pretty good. And we saw some pelicans. So right now we're up to 95 birds, and we still have about three and a half hours of birding left. We're out here at the Straight River Marsh. It's about 6.30 in the evening. We've seen a black turn, which is really pretty cool. And there's a lot of other swallows that are skimming the surface of the marsh here. Aren't those swans neat? So, here come a yellow throat in the background, the one going witchity witchity. And we have some geese with their babies. It's always fun to see. They're getting pretty big. Doesn't take long, does it? And we'll continue to look here for more waterfowl and also hopefully some shorebirds. Well, our day is drawing to an end. We just got our last bird of the day, maybe. Eastern Meadowlark. <laughs> We got one more spot to check out. And it is now roughly 8.30, so we've been birding for 15 and a half hours on the big day bird count. Our big day bird count is history. And right now you are seeing some photographs that I took of some of the birds that we saw on Saturday. We saw a total of 113 species. Pretty okay. Our highest number that we've recorded is 142. That was a number of years ago. I'd like to thank my fellow companion birders who were with me on this big day bird count. Ken Vale, Mike Gallagher who came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, Emily Hutchins, her friend Jenny who came down from Brainerd, Nels Thompson, Marilyn Nash, Daryl Hill, and my husband Gary Johnson. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of the Oatana Today Show. I'm Diane Wilson of Profinian Financial, the bank that helps you achieve your financial dreams. Profinian Financial is proud to be a supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, Ann Pluskanko here from Senior Place. Senior Place has new hours. Mondays and Fridays we're open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Participate in Zumba Gold, Bike Club, Table Tennis, Computer Classes, Speakers, and much more. Don't forget the Senior Place Partnership Program with 39 businesses giving discounts and incentives with your Senior Place membership card. Membership is only $35 for the year, which comes to just $3 a month to be a member. Consider joining us today. Hello, I'm Matthew Camp, the new plastic surgeon at Mayo Clinic Health System of Owatonna and Albert Lee. I trained in medical school at Wake Forest in North Carolina and completed plastic surgery training in Southern California at Loma Linda. Plastic surgeons provide a wide range of aesthetic and reconstructive surgery. We operate from head to toe. I look forward to meeting you. Hi, I'm Brenda Bednar with Summit Mortgage and I'm a proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. It's been a lustrous day.
day that's finally here. Unfortunately, we didn't have a trial run with that scissors. <laughs> it seemed sharp enough, but I guess it was just a tough ribbon. So. It's certainly an honor and a privilege to represent my parents, Sis and Steve Lang, at this historic Steele County <laughs> History Center ribbon cutting. Our family ties in Owatonna run very deep. My mother's grandfather arrived in Owatonna in 1870 and was a well-respected judge. And my father and his family came in 1911. My dad, at 100 years old, during his 101st birthday, was nearly two-thirds as old as the city itself. When we first started discussing becoming major donors to a meaningful project, the following criteria were considered. The project should be a major undertaking that could benefit the rural community as well as the city. And that was very important being in the canning food processing business as the uh, local farmers supplied crops for us to process. So that was, a, that was a very important criteria. The project should be bricks and mortar. We wanted it to be something long lasting. Here's an, another very important one. Can't underestimate the importance that we gave to this. The project should be managed by an outstanding active board. And that is true and will continue to be true. I know it will be. The project should stimulate the citizenry to contribute so that the funds donated by my parents would be matched. And that relates back to the board and their ability to get out there and, and raise those funds and uh, the community supporting it, which they certainly did. It should be a lasting legacy. And that it will be. It will be here long after all of us Gone. Only one possibility met all the criteria a Steel County History Center. We stand here today in a facility and environment that will benefit the people of the county by preserving who we are, or who we were, and who we are. In honor of my dad's passing on April 9th, I would like to quote baseball legend Branch Rickey. It is not the honor that you take with you, but the heritage you leave behind. Thank you.
morning I was planting corn before I came, and I was thinking about how good it is to live in Steele County. And one of the reasons is because of the heritage that uh, we have inherited from a lot of entrepreneurial people from all the communities, not just Otana, but from the Medford, the Hopes, the Blooming Prairies, the Allendales. And that's what's made Steele County good and a really wonderful place to live. So it's a people that had a lot of dreams. And I'm up here today to congratulate the Steele County Historical Society Board for having a dream. And today we dedicate the result of that dream. It was through your leadership, your dedication, your preservation, per perseverance that brought on this day, along with a lot of community members. But it took leadership to pull all this together. And so I thank you on behalf of the whole community. I know there were difficulties and challenges, but the result is something that you and all of us can be proud of and our posterity will enjoy it forever. So thank you very much. Okay, so we're sharing it with the county commissioners now too. They built the building. Uh, anyway, now we got a site. We know what our needs are. The committee's done their, their research. Um, now what's it going to look like? We need to kind of move forward with that. So at this point, uh, Kane and Thompson, the architectural firm from Rochester got involved, and I would ask that uh, they stand, I believe Bruce and, I, and uh, David Kane are here, I don't know if any of the other staff are here. And David, would you like to step forward and make a few comments for us? The architectural firm. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. In, uh, in 1974, I joined my dad in practice. He had an office, was an architect in Austin, and he handed me a slip of paper. We didn't have much work, and he handed me a slip of paper, and he said, go to Oton and find us some work, and here's three names to call on. And I was just out of college. I came to Oton, and I scored a project. The fee was, I think, $340, and I felt like I had the world by the tail. <laughs> Never did I dream that some 36, 7 years later, I'd be standing here in front of a building like this, still in Oatana, and uh, really proud of this effort. I have to say, though, that it's a partnership. And we work with a lot of nonprofits, a lot of church projects, and a lot of volunteer boards. I have never in my life seen a board like this one. And I just need to applaud this board. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the board for picking this day. It's a lot nicer than the groundbreaking day. <laughs> what, what was it, 20 below Bob that day? Uh, but it is a partnership, and it takes a client who's willing to dream and vision takes an architect with some ideas, some strange, I admit. Uh, in fact, I asked Bob if this was the strangest building he'd ever built this morning. He said, no, but it was the strangest architect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. Uh, but anyway, it was a joy to be part of this process with, with the builders and the board and the committee and the passion that is Owatonna. I've never seen a community come together for a project like this, and we are very appreciative about having been the architect. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Jake with Napa Auto Parts. Napa has the know-all for all your automotive needs. Napa is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Do you know how to safely dispose of your expired or unused prescription and non-prescription medications? Not by flushing them down the toilet or putting them in the garbage. Doing so pollutes our rivers, streams, and drinking water supply. Take it to the box instead for safe, secure disposal. It's easy. Bring your unused medications in their original containers to the drop-off locations listed on the screen. 
and drop them in the take it to the box drop box. Proper disposal of unwanted medications keeps them out of the hands of children and out of our environment. This is a message from the Safe and Drug Free Coalition of Steele County. Hi, I'm Jan Hansen, and I am at A Plus So and Back, the fun place to be. We are proud supporters of the Owatonna today. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us out on location today as we uh, did the Big Day Bird Count and had a little more of the uh, grand opening ceremony at the History Center. A few announcements before we wrap up our program today. Make your next party or community event green by providing guests with label containers to deposit empty recyclable cans and bottles. This is from Steel County Environmental Service and they of course have those large event recycling containers. They can be used free of charge by any Steel County individual, family, group or business. If you're planning a special event, graduation parties are perfect, family reunions, church festivals, corporate events, or community celebrations. By now, you've probably seen them out and about, and they are just handy as heck. And for those of you who don't want to put your recyclable materials in the trash, and of course nobody wants to, um, but this provides that great opportunity, and they're just slick. Last year, 68 individuals and groups borrowed event recycling containers from Steel County for special events. You can call the Steel County Recycling Hotline to uh, get it set up for your event, 451 Five four four three four five one five four four three. Owatonna Art Center just opened a new exhibition of pastels by Minnesota artist Marcus Muller. There was a reception yesterday. Um, that work will be on the, on display through June twenty fourth. His uh, keen observation and use of color create atmosphere, dreamy and uh, tranquil feelings can be felt in his landscapes. Dramatic use of light and dark gives a sense of movement, and so you'll want to stop and see artist Marcus Muller's uh, work at the Owatonna Art Center. They of course are open. Uh, Tuesday through Sunday from 1 to 5 and closed on Mondays. Summer camp at Riverbend Nature Center is coming up soon. There are a whole host of opportunities for kids of all ages and teens that can actually head out to the Mountain Wilderness State Park in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. If you're interested in finding out more about those, you can visit Riverbend Nature Center in Faribault on the website, rbnc.org, or give them a call. Their phone number is 332-7151, and they'll be happy to give you more information. Also, Family Camp 2012 for Young Life is going on a little bit later on in the summer, August 23rd through August 26th. If you and your family are interested in that, you can hop on the Young Life website or call in the Young Life office here, and I'm sure they'll get you more information about that. It is at Castaway Camp, and it's for the whole family. A Native Prairie Plant and Bird Walk will be going on this Friday, June 8th. Uh, 8.30, 8.30, meet and register in Hayfield, Minnesota, and then you'll be doing some walking. The tour is free. You'll be walking about two miles on uneven terrain and um, looking at all sorts of great things in the uh, scientific and natural areas, and it's going to be a great day. You can call Emily Hutchins, Space is Limited, 455 5841 455 5841 and she'll be happy to give you more info. Please join us on Wednesday. We were out at Smoking and Steel, and so we're going to give you a little taste of that, if you will. Also, Tanya Paley joins us from Safe and Drug Free Coalition. So have a great day. We'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>